Hey everyone. In this video, I would like to show you how you can import Illustrator files into After Effects. And I'd like to also show you all of the options available to you when you do so. So let's start here inside of Illustrator. And you can see uh, the file that I have open just here is the same file on my desktop just here. It's lounge.ai. And we have multiple layers going on inside of my layers panel just here. So my couch is on its own layer. So is the clock and so is the picture. So my first big tip here, any elements that you might want to individually control within After Effects later, make sure they are on their own top layer layer, top level layer that is within Illustrator. So here is couch because I know that I might want to move the couch around later. So I'm putting it on its own layer and guys, please give your layers a good name. It will certainly help you out further down the track. Okay. So that's our Illustrator file. Let's jump into After Effects. Okay many ways we can import a file inside of After Effects. Uh, from within the project panel, we can simply double click that blank area just there. Or we could go up to File, Import, choose File. Or we could choose Command or Control I. But in this case, the method I'm going to use today is to simply grab the file from my desktop and drag it into my project panel like so. Okay, so let's systematically review all of the options available to us. Let's first choose Footage, Merge Layers, Choose OK. OK, now I didn't explicitly state this a moment ago inside of Illustrator, but you can see with the graphic selector just here, its image dimensions are 1920 by 700, which is the exact size of the Illustrator file we were looking at. So what's come in is a perfect one-to-one um, -one, uh, representation of the pixels within the Illustrator file. But of course, everything has just been mushed into a single graphic. So if I was to drag lounge.ai down to my timeline to create a new composition, there it is just there, so everything looks great. It's exactly what we would expect, but again, everything is contained within a single graphic, so we can't edit individual components. So let's select that from within the project panel, delete that, delete, and let's bring that in again. So we're going to continue to bring it in as footage, but instead of merge layers, let's this time choose choose layer, and let's bring in the couch. And let's set the footage dimensions to layer size. So we're bringing in the couch. Footage dimensions is layer size. Choosing OK. Now, see what's come in just here. So the couch has come in. No big surprise there. But look at the image size. It's 590 by 329. So considerably smaller than the Illustrator file as a whole. And if I drag this down to create a composition, Look at what we've got. So the checkerboard pattern represents transparency, of course, but you'll notice that what has come in, the graphic actually honors the size of the artwork within that layer. So that's kind of cool, but um, I'll make a bit more of a deal of just a moment when I compare this against the next import option. So I'm just going to delete that. And let's bring this in again, and I'm going to change just one option. So it's still footage. We will choose the couch layer again, but we saw layer size just a moment ago for footage dimensions. Let's change that to document size. Choose OK. So here we are in the project panel. Sure enough, there is our couch, but check out the size. It's 1920 by 700. And if I create a composition from this, look at all of our transparency just in here. So again, the couch is coming exactly the same as it did a moment ago, but this time the image that has come in honors the image dimensions as opposed to the artwork dimensions. So guys, one's not necessarily better than the other. It's totally up to you how you prefer to work. I've used both methods. I found that depending on the project I'm working on, uh, maybe you will want to honor the image dimensions if you're trying to line up big chunks of artwork, but maybe if you've got lots of little pieces of artwork, you're just moving randomly around the page. Maybe you want to actually honor the layer size. It's totally up to you and it could be independent uh, dependent upon the project that you're actually working on. So let's delete that and import our file again. So we've already looked at all of the footage options. Let's now look at composition. You'll notice the layer options have grayed out. So we only, we only have two options when we are using composition. Let's on a layer size. Let's choose the layer size. And it's going to honor the layer size as you would expect it to. 
So what it's actually done is it's imported all of the assets, but notice all of the guys that have come in just here actually correspond to the layers that we had inside of our Illustrator file. So if I click on say couch just here, so this couch is actually coming in at 590 by 329, which is exactly what we saw earlier. So if I was to double click on that individual element just there, sure enough, that's exactly what we've seen before. So no big surprises there, but what's great is all of the individual elements have come in, but what's even greater again, guys, is After Effects has actually created this composition just here called Lounge. So if I double click on that and open that up, all of those individual elements are down here on our timeline and they have all been nicely arranged out here in our composition panel. So if I click on couch, for example, you can see there is the boundaries of the couch just layer, couch layer just there, and I can easily turn that off and on as well. So this time when we imported, the individual elements have come in honoring the artwork dimensions from the Illustrator file. So let me delete that and show you the very last import option. So let's bring this in. We'll choose composition, document size. Choose OK. Now visually what we're going to get in just a moment, guys, is exactly what we saw a moment ago. All of the elements have come in. Um, here they are just here. But notice if I click on any of them, they all read as 1920 by 700. So if I open up couch again, for example, you'll see that here is our huge checkerboard pattern. So the couch artwork has come in beautifully, but it's again honoring the size of the image, not the individual um, artwork uh, dimensions. And if I open up my lounge composition just here, you'll see that visually it will look exactly the same. But if I click on say couch, for example, you can see that the dimensions of the couch layer are that of the original Illustrator file. So again, turning off and on couch is exactly the same. It's just really up to you whether you want your individual layers to honor the artwork within them or to honor the entire document. Okay, so they're all of your import options, guys. But there's a few things that I'd uh, still like to show you. What happens, for example, if we wish to update a layer? Well, let's maybe update the clock. So I'm going to zoom in just here and let's jump back into our Illustrator file. And let's zoom in on the clock just here. So let's unlock the clock layer. And I'm just going to select this um, brown uh, border just here. And I'll double click on the swatch for the fill. And let's change that to a really bright, obvious color. I'll just change that to green. It's not pretty, I know, but you'll notice it if it changes. So I'm just going to save that. So my machine's just having a bit of a think. Uh, these files are very large, guys. There's a lot of graphical elements going on inside of here. So you'll forgive my machine for um, having a little bit of a think just there. Diving back into After Effects. Now this will automatically update. You can see it's just having a bit of a think just now, but that graphic will automatically update. And again, it would normally happen much faster. Just I'm using a very large file. Sure enough, it's actually kicked in. Guys, also, if you're having issues with the graphic maybe not um, refreshing, what you can always do is you can always find it here inside of the project panel. So here is my clock. You can always right mouse click on that and just choose reload footage. So you can actually force After Effects to update that graphic. So there we go. You can see that that graphic has indeed updated. So that was nice and easy. Let's just um, jump back into Illustrator. I'll just undo that with a command of control Z, save that. And let's jump back into After Effects and we should see that update in just a moment. And there we go. Let's jump back very nicely. Okay, so you can see that we can easily update artwork inside of Illustrator, and that will update in After Effects, even if you need to wait a few seconds or so. One thing that trips a lot of people up is what happens if you want to actually add content to your Illustrator file? So back here inside of Illustrator, I'll just zoom out a bit just here. Um, you can see we've already got all of our layer structure um, happening just here. I want to jump into this other file just here, which I've called Projector, because I wish to add some artwork. So I'm just going to select all of that, or copy that, back here inside of my lounge file. Let's just create a new layer. And let's call that projector. And then just pressing Command or Control F to paste that into place. Okay, very nice. So we've got our projector layer going on just in here. So I'll save that here inside of Illustrator. We'll just give that a second to update. And then let's jump back into After Effects. Okay, now here's the problem. 
even if we try to force an update, it's only going to honor the artwork that's already in here. So you can see there's really no, we don't have access to the original Illustrator file. We can't force an update of any kind. So how can we now get that project component in? Well, what we can do is we can actually import this file again. So if I come down to my lounge.ai file, let's bring that in again. Let's actually try and go after the individual layer. So under composition, excuse me, under import kind, let's change that back to footage from composition. Let's choose a layer and let's choose that projector layer, which I just created. And we'll also bring that in, uh, bring that in as document size to honor the option I just chosen a few moments ago. Let's choose okay. And here we go, that layer has come in there like so. Now I can actually just drag that into the folder um, After Effects automatically created a few moments ago. And then I can actually drag this into my timeline as well, into my composition. Give it a second and there we go. Our project, our projector, I beg your pardon, has actually popped up just here. And this is now effectively the same as if we had imported the entire document having had that projector in there in the first place. So just to prove everything is nicely linked up, let's jump back into Illustrator. Let's actually make a couple of changes. So let's zoom in here and let's update a new component and an old component. So let's go after the projector and the clock as well. So let's um, select our frame on the clock and let's change that to something crazy. Maybe let's go after a bright pink and then let's go after the projector, maybe this um, front face just here. Let's change that to something very obvious as well. Maybe we'll go for a bright blue. Okay, so we've made um, two crazy color changes, one to a new component, one to an old component. I am just pressing Command or Control S to save that file. And then when we jump back into After Effects, hopefully those two things will automatically update. Jumping back into After Effects. Let's give this a minute and see what happens. Hey, fantastic. So there you go. You can see that both the old and the new component have updated very nicely. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope that helps you out on bringing your Illustrator files into After Effects. I'm curious to see what you build. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.